Current divider circuit is a powerful technique and very simple technique that applies to parallel connected resistors and how the current gets divided between them. So let me show you an example of a circuit that has two resistors connected in parallel and they're also in parallel with the current source. So what I know is the value of the current source and what I'm typically interested in is how much is the current that goes to R1 and how much is the current that goes to R2 in here. And of course, we do know that the voltage across all of them is plus minus V. They do share the same voltage since they are all connected in parallel. So based on Ohm's law, I can figure out that V is the same as um, I1 times R1, and it's the same V, which is I2 times R2. And also, we can substitute these two R1 and R2 with an equivalent resistor. So this particular source is basically acting on a resistor that is R equivalent that is simply... Um, simply R1 in parallel with R2, which we can we know by now it's R1 R2 divided by R1 plus R2. We can say that this is the same IS in here and this here plus minus is V. So we can say in this particular last case V is simply IS times R equivalent, which is simply IS times R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. All right, so now we can pick up this this in, um, equation, this equation, and make them equal because this is the same V and this is the same V. And what we get is I1 times R1 is simply IS times R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. In a little bit of um, simplification, we should be able to see that if we divide both sides by I1, that will be the rule. I1 equals IS times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Okay, and similarly, we can see that I2 is simply the source times R1 divided by R1 plus R2. So what this is basically current division rule, and what it tells me is the following. So let me just highlight it. So what it tells me is the following. If you're interested in I1, well, well, IS got divided into I1 and I2. And if you're interested in I1, what you need to do, based on that, is go and take the value of the other resistor and divide it by the sum of both resistors. That's what will happen. So if you're interested in I1, you go to R2 in, in the numerator. If you're interested in I2, you go to R1. Okay, so it basically tells me it relates the branch current to, to the source current that gets divided in between them. And of course, this here applies not only to one resistor, two resistors, we can have more resistors. But just to make sure that um, you understand it, so this one here is always, always going to be um, a fraction that is less than or equal to one. This one also will be less than a fraction of, um, fra basically, it's, this fraction is less than or equal to one. What I'm saying is this current and this current will be definitely smaller than I of S if we have like normal valued resistors. We don't have a zero or an infinity. We have like some sort of a normal valued resistors. These sources or these currents based on KCL that gets added in here. So they must be smaller. So to take a look at current divider rule in general. So the generic um, resistor. So if you have like a bunch of resistors, the generic current divider rule tells me the following. If you're interested in some sort of an I and that happened to be here, this IJ in here. Okay, and you're interested in this I of J, it's simply say, what you need to do is you need to say, well, you can tell me the IJ is simply V, that's the voltage between here and here, that's the voltage across all of these elements, divided by R of J. But hopefully you know that V will be simply I of S times R equivalent. Okay, so I can substitute or I can replace this circuit with the following. This is the current in here and this is the R equivalent. Okay, so what I'm telling you in here is based on Ohm's law, I can just write that this V in here is simply the I of S times the R equivalent. Okay, and what we need, can do is we can take this in here and substitute it with the V. That's what this V in here. Okay, so that tells me that I of J is simply I of S times R equivalent divided by R of J. So this happened to be the generic rule um, of current division, not only for two, but for any number, okay? So for any number of resistors. So if you're interested in some sort of a current in here, let's do I of two. So what you need to do is you need to tell me, well, I of two is simply the source times the R equivalent of all of these resistors divided by this R of two in here, okay? And if you open it up, like in, in, in the case of two resistors, this is what you will get. Um, I recommend that you memorize this in here because, I mean, it is really useful. For I1, you just go to R2. For I2, you go to R1. But um, for the generic one, you don't have to remember it. It's basically I of S times R equivalent divided by R of J. And a couple of interesting cases in here is, let's assume that for some reason or another, we were able to connect a resistor of zero in parallel. A resistor of zero in parallel is pretty much a wire. 
So how much is this one in here? Let's assume it, let's call it, for example, IA. So we can figure out IA, and in order for me to figure out what IA is in here, this one in here, of course, RA equals zero, that's basically zero ohms. Okay, IA is simply based on this rule, is I of S times R equivalent divided by R A, which is, um, which is zero. Okay, of course you can tell me like, oh, division by zero or not, but before we, before we go there, let's figure out what the R equivalent is. So R equivalent is simply um, one over R equivalent will be equal to um, one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3 and so forth, plus all the way. And of course, plus at some point it will be RA, which is zero. So it's one over zero, it's infinity. So the R equivalent will happen to be across all of them. Um, you will see the R equivalent is simply zero. That will be the case. That's our equivalent. So what I'm saying is the equivalent of all these resistors is just a wire. And that makes sense because um, this gets shorted out, this gets shorted out, this gets shorted out, this gets shorted out because I connected this wire across them. So the this particular current is just seeing that wire in here. It, no current will go in here, no current will go in here, no current will go in here. And effectively, because of that case, you will see that I of A is simply will become I of S times zero divided by zero, or R equivalent will be the same as R of A. So this R equivalent in here will be the same as R of A. So this will become one to so that simply I of S, which makes sense because this tells me that the I of S will not get divided because these are shorted out. So no current will go in here. So everything will go to the I of A. So that's the first case. Um, you can do the same type of analysis when instead of R of A, what you have is maybe, um, let me just delete that, instead of R um, zero, you get basically R A happen to be infinity. So in this particular case, you'll tell me, well, there's no difference whatsoever, and the current going through this particular branch, which is R A equals infinity, um, is simply um, zero. There's no current that goes in here. And you can do this type of analysis, and you'll see that the R I of A at that particular case will be zero.